I think hackathons are amazing. Um, you know, I was a judge for this one, and I said the only kind of bribe I would take is if you could give me control of an entire city so I could run a year forever long hackathon in it. Because I think that'd be a super productive way to, you know, have organize a society. It's the first few moments of the development of an ecosystem, and uh, there's just a shocking amount of complexity uh, that goes into building a substrate for global economic, social, and political systems, and so protocol level, application layer, important core components at, at the application layer, um, spinning up millions of software developers to keep the global machine running. It, this is all just starting to get put into place and it's uh, astonishing to watch. The closer we can get to the world where we all can decide for each other and then collaborate peacefully, that's their, my vision, that's the world I want to build. And uh, the crypto and the blockchain, that's exactly, you know, we can build way better financial system. We, need, we don't need those huge banks that are basically raping us. You know, we don't need those insurance companies. We don't need so many other old school institutions. We can find and build a better way to govern ourselves, to handle finances, to handle insurance. So I'm, and you know, it'll take us a while, you know, no doubt about this, but I'm so excited to see all the smart people working on this stuff, collaborating, you know, and people around the world. As people are building applications, they realize the limitations of the current platform, and that's when these new ideas evolve, and that's when people, you know, people start to build these solutions that they actually needed for other people to kind of use. Uh, so I think, you know, hackathons like this, it's, it's like exactly what, you know, the Ethereum ecosystem needs for it to like grow to the next level. Well, it's very exciting, all the, all the protocols or all the ideas that are built around, uh, around Ethereum. Um, so some, some side chain things, I mean, uh, like, uh, uh, Raiden, State Channel Network, uh, Polkadot, uh, Cosmos, Definity, uh, and certainly Truebit, kind of the the the, um, the ecosystem around around Ethereum. That's definitely very interesting too. Renewed hope for the data availability problem. Some new angles on that coming from uh, Live Peer and Storage and Gnosis projects. So we had. Um, yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm excited about that. I was happy to see new applications coming on 0x as well. Um, I mean, I'm excited about some of the work that we're doing in proof of, proof of stake and scalability. I'm excited about some of the privacy work. Um, a lot of the applications that people are going to come up with that use some of the privacy work. What was good is that there were projects building on top of other projects that worked, and there were new projects that worked. and. Um, that that's, doesn't seem new and exciting, but it's actually kind of new and exciting because, um, you know, last year some of the tools were still hard to use, um, and uh, we have better tools um, now. So, uh, yeah. I think it's interesting just to have such a large congregation of people that are working on infrastructure projects that are going to be like the base layer for all these interesting applications that we might see at the hackathon or beyond the hackathon. We actually start this next week with Byzantium, um, where a lot of the new scalability projects that weren't originally envisioned in, uh, in Vitalik's white paper will start to be implemented. Um, so we'll have ZK Snarks uh, here it, probably at the start of next year fully implemented. Um, you know, Casper POS will, will, is a really exciting project uh, that is very difficult. Um, it's a, obviously a non-trivial technical challenge and that's why it's great to have so many people here brainstorming on, on topics like this. For me personally, I think that the most important things right now with Ethereum are performance. There's still a dramatic kind of gap between where we want to be, which is you know, several hundred thousand to millions of transactions per second, and where we are today, which is sub-20. If we can start building products or building projects rather that can actually start fixing that gap, things like TrueBit, State Channels, Plasma, and if we can help spread the knowledge of how these systems work to more people, I think that we're going to get to the point that Ethereum needs to be at much faster. Personally, I think that's like the most important thing for people to be con um, concerned about, but there are all kinds of other product, uh, products right now that are really interesting, um, especially around just token models and how you can build mechanisms. There was a great talk by Jeff Coleman at the beginning of the hackathon 
where you kind of made the statement, everything is a mechanism. I think that's kind of a different way of thinking that most software engineers are not used to, where now all of a sudden they have this ability to kind of design economic mechanisms just in code. I think what's going to be interesting is trying to educate hackers on what are the right ways to do that, what techniques need to be applied, what are the software design patterns. All of this stuff is still really fertile ground that not, no one has really figured out um, that much of yet. It's still a very small group of people that are kind of pushing the way for most of us. So if we can get more people on board with that kind of thinking, that's going to be the most important, I think. Uh, the platform level has been remarkably secure up to this point uh, in the Bitcoin space as well. Um, but we need to build um, secure functional layers at the application layer. Uh, so it starts with identity and core building blocks like reputation and uh, different ways of using tokens, um, things like that. But then um, we will need to build layers of hardened infrastructure uh, so that naive users can make use of these systems without uh, needing to know anything about blockchain really and, and be certain that uh, um, they will be more in control of their aspects of identity and their value tokens, um, but you know, never have a chance of losing them, never get into a bad situation. Like uh, on the one hand scalability, right? Because when I look at all of those huge projects raising lots of money, it's, they have built on a pyramid of assumptions that you know that blockchains will be scaled in this way and there's but there's so much more has to be done in this underlying infrastructure so that's kind of one big area and many people obviously are working on that and the second one is uh, user interface usability or whatever right because even nowadays when I introduce new people to blockchain and cryptocurrency right and let's say JAX is one of the popular wallets in this space but it's totally messed up right like there are so many bugs UI problems and they are still one of the best you know but it's their state of uh, user interface user experience in blockchain is dismal and that's kind of a big error that's where I would love developers to keep that in mind right you can be very smart and you can have awesome technology but unless you make that technology usable for normal people not kind of other developers, but for your mom, for whatever, right? Uh, for non-technical people, we're not going anywhere. The biggest problems are going to be uh, things like scalability, how we can get more transactions through or have our transactions do more work uh, in order to accommodate the kind of scale that this technology will need to uh, really work, to really take over what's, what's already out there, to be an improvement on what already exists. I mean, scalability, is, is definitely kind of uh, the biggest challenge. So in theory, we can, we can do all those, uh, we can already build all those uh, components or all those dApps. Um, but to make, them really, uh, to make them really work kind of in the real life, we need to think about all those tricks and all those um, hacks, uh, how, how to make it scalable. So how, how can we maybe only do, do parts on the blockchain and do a lot of parts um, of the blockchain, so there's scalability is definitely one of the biggest um, challenges. I think the, those definitely are important uh, technical challenges, um, and you know, like we in the Ethereum Foundation are definitely spending a lot of people and resources at working on them. Um, and you know, like right now, the state is definitely not perfect, but it's been improving, and I think we'll continue to improve more and more rapidly over the next five years. At which point. Hopefully blockchains actually will be usable for you know, many kinds of mainstream applications at a very high scale. So I was really partial to something called ETH Drive, which allows you to format a, a USB stick and stick your keys in there securely, maybe even one day as part of a private partition, which would be hidden from view. And I think obviously key ownership and secure storage, offline storage is critical. And it's gonna be one of the major friction to adoption in the space people will lose their keys and they will you know not only lose their money but in the case of socket they'll lose access to their houses so having a key management solution is critical and I thought that was one of the very good projects out there certainly want to try it out also so the guy from Firefly we do enough chain um, and an air gap wallet that you can build yourself using a microcontroller as well open source really exciting stuff stable coin problem there's not a stable cryptocurrency um, the other problem is scalability. So there's a ton of different projects working on scalability. Um, there probably could be more work on sharding than there is right now. There's only a couple people working on it. Um, same, same thing for state channels uh, projects. 